there's three different kinds of zebras, and there is the uh, the mountain zebra, the uh, plains zebra, and then there's the greve zebra, which is what we have here. The greve zebra is the largest of the of the zebra kind. Uh, they can get up to 990 pounds, almost a thousand pounds, and uh, so that that's the largest of of them. Most of the other ones won't get more than 800 to 850 pounds. Um, but as you can, uh, and then as you can see, uh, they are. So when you guys look at when you guys look at these animals, when you guys look at these animals, what kind of an animal do you think of? What does it look like? It looks like a horse, doesn't it? Okay, and that's and that's because it is. It's part of the horse kind. All right, it's part of the horse family. All right, is what it's known as. And so as horses, as horses, they are known as grazers. Do you guys know what a grazer is? What's a grazer, sir? Something and. Right, and it comes through and it grazes, and grazing is saying it's going through and eating all the grass in the area, and that's what they'll do. They'll come through. Horses do that, and zebras do that also, right? So they're grazers. Now, the, in particular, the greve zebras are known to be able to digest very coarse, uh, very coarse uh, grass, all right? And that's one of your fill-ins is, is coarse. So they can eat very coarse grass, and that means all, a lot of these other animals will come through and eat just like the tops off of the grass, where it's nice and sweet and, and fresh, as opposed to these guys will come through and eat stuff that's more dry and, uh, and, and more coarse, like I said, down, at the, down near the bottom. And that's very important because in a very arid area, where do these guys live? Do you guys know? Yes, ma'am? Excuse me? In Africa, that is right. And Africa is a very can be a very dry place, okay. And so uh, they they are they are very in need of uh, being able to eat food that's able to draw to, to, to grow in that area, right? So they're able to eat very coarse grass like that, and it doesn't have to be a lot of water, right? For them, this is in particular the greve zebras. Plain zebras actually live within a 30 mile radius of a watering hole. They're very dependent upon water. The greve zebras are actually known to be able to uh, uh, be able to go with uh, five days without drinking, without drinking water. So that's what, uh, that's what they can do. Now, <clears throat> along with eating very coarse food, guys, if you, if you think about it, you're eating a lot of coarse food, and, and, uh, which means it's rough, all right? That is going to be very wearing on your teeth, so it goes through and it wears their teeth down, and that's what it does. So it's wearing their teeth down. But the thing is, is that God knew that, and what he's done is he's given them teeth, not like our teeth, but their teeth don't stop growing. So their teeth continue to grow as hmm. opposed to ours stop, right? So that allows them to be able to eat this coarse food. Their teeth actually wear down, but they are growing right back at the same time. And so God is... God's known that, he provided for them in that, and allowed them to be able to, able to uh, eat that food and to be able to have that plentiful supply and be able to have the teeth to be able to do it. There'd be nothing worse than to wear your teeth out and have nothing but gums and be able to go, oh, I can't eat anymore. And there's, unfortunately, there's no zebra dentists out there in the, in the wild really working on them, you know? Got another false teeth for there. No, so that doesn't happen with them. God's provided for them, right? And, and that's a way in which we can look at God's great provision for even the animals. So if I, we talked about these guys being a lot like horses, right? They, they look a lot like horses. So I put a bunch of horses out here and I put a zebra out here. Are you guys going to be able to, 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 to find the zebra amidst all the horses? How would you be able to find him? because they have stripes, don't they? That makes them stand out, doesn't it? Yeah, they would look very different. And those stripes is something that makes them very unique among all the horses that we have. Because not, not a lot of horses have any stripes, do they? No. But not only does it make them unique among the horses, but also makes them unique among each other because every zebra has got a different stripe pattern. Every one of those, no two zebras are alike. It's like fingerprints on people, all right? And to me, I see this as being the creativity of God, and not only that, but when I see the uniqueness of animals and the uniqueness of people, it points to the uniqueness of our God. Our God being different and set above and different from anything else is where he is very unique. I look at it as the uniqueness of our Messiah. When, Jesus, when, when God says, here's the Messiah, he's coming, here's all these things that he's going to be born in Bethlehem, right? He's gonna be born of a virgin. 
He's going to do these miracles. He's going to teach you by parables. He's pointing to somebody that only one person fulfilled. Points to the uniqueness of Jesus Christ mm. and what he did on the cross as being a salvation for us, right? In that no other person's done that. He is the only God man, right? Excuse me. That's very unique, right? Mm. And that's where I look at the uniqueness of people and the uniqueness of animals and saying this points to the uniqueness of our saviors, right? So, very unique. Um, now, why the stripes? You got the stripes on them, and that helps them. Yes, sir? With, um, confusion camouflage. Confusion camouflage. He's been doing some homework. All right, you're right, camouflage, right? So that helps them hide. What would they be hiding from? That's right, lions are their main predators in that part. So predators or lions would be one of your fill-ins there, right? Because they have lions and, and leopards, hyenas, wild dogs all hunting them, right? They've got no way to necessarily protect themselves. They don't have claws. They don't have long, sharp teeth that they could go and attack another animal with. They've got to protect themselves either by camouflage or by running really fast, right? <laughs> and so they'll do that too. But, um, that, but, the, but the stripes definitely help them, right? Because that stripe pattern, they can either hide amongst, le uh, amongst tall grass, or else as they're running together, those stripes moving together, a lion can't tell, is this one big animal? <laughs> or is this a bunch of small ones? Who's the closest to me? What, you know, which way are they even going? You know, it's like on the, on the highway, you see the wheels going this way, but it, it looks like it's spinning backwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it can confuse them. So he's got it right from the standpoint of camouflage and confusion. Uh, the other thing to note is, is that lions and leopards and, and the wild dogs, they're all colored blind, okay? So in the midst of a colored world, we can look and say they stand out very good, but in a black and white, you know, or gray world, that would be very difficult. They could maybe blend in better from, from that, all right? So now my question to you is, were there any, from a biblical standpoint, were there any zebras on Noah's Ark? What do you think? Yes, yes. Why do you think so? You uh, sound so sure. Because, uh, um, the, because the God said to take two of every kind of animal. That's right. He brought two of every kind of every animal, right? And since they're here, there had to be a representative on the ark because what happened to everything that wasn't on the ark? Yes, ma'am? It died. Right. So anything that's living had to be represented on the ark. So therefore, we would have had zebras on, on, the, on the ark. But let me just ask you this. So do you think we had poodles on the ark? <laughs> Why not? We got poodles now. We had to have had poodles on the ark. I don't even know what poodles <laughs> We got poodles and dachshunds, right? Great Danes. We've got all these different dog kinds, right? What do you think? Right, right. And so it's been shown scientifically that that dogs that 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 what you could do is the dogs and wolves they track them all back to one original dog population right so from that from that point you've got all the dogs coming from an original dog kind so when god said he's putting one of every kind on there he is sending one of the dog kind and out of that dog kind he's bringing forth all of the different dog kinds that there were and in the same way i would say he did the same thing with the horses he would have sent an original horse kind and in that horse kind he would have had horses and donkeys and zebras represented so that would say that i would have to be able to how can i tell some things are related and that's because they can have children and so this is something that normally doesn't happen, but in private zoos, they've done, or private parks and stuff like this, they've actually had this, is to where this is called a zonkey. A zonkey? Because it has a zebra for a dad and it has a donkey for a mom, okay? So you see, it looks like a donkey on the top, but his legs are all striped, right? Oh, wow. So he looks, he's a mixture of the two, isn't he? So he's a, that's a zonkey, okay? <clears throat> and there's another one. There's the, there's the mom, zebra, with her little baby zonkey, right? Because the dad donkey is, uh, isn't, isn't in the picture there. Or, wow. that's a zorse, okay? That's a zebra and a horse, okay? Showing that I can actually have offspring from these two kinds, right? You see, boy, it looks like a brown horse. 
But look at the stripes, right? It's not this, even right, it not. That's a real That's animal, awesome. right? Okay, this isn't Photoshop, right? Yeah. This is an actual animal. So this is this man. So can those reproduce also or are they sterile? Most of the times these hybrids are sterile, right? But in the original kind, right, God told the original kind to go forth and be fruitful and multiply, right? And so in the original kind, they would have had the ability to reproduce after their kind, right? But over time, you start losing that because of the fall, right? Because of decay and because of loss mm. of information, you end up losing that. So sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. So here, what does that look like? It looks like a dolphin, doesn't it? Right? This is actually a wolfin. It's a whale and a dolphin mixed because in, in the sea world they had a whale and a dolphin in the same swimming pool and they made it and actually had a wolfin. So the whale's got 88 teeth, the dolphin's got 44 teeth, the wolfin has 66 teeth. <laughs> so it's a mixture, right? Just like you're a mixture of stuff from your mom and your dad in the same way. These are all animals that have a mixture. And once again, it points back to what an original kind would have been like. Right? They've got a lot more information in them than what we think of. We think of, oh, they had to have zebras on the ark. Now, it doesn't stop there. That is a liger, which is a lion and a tiger mix. That's a very big animal. They're bigger than their mothers and fathers, okay? So, this is a liger. Lions usually in Africa, tigers usually in Asia. They don't meet each other, right? But I don't know, these two, they found up on a matchup website or whatever it is, and they are dating, and the next thing you know, they're having kids. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway, so ligers. Here's another one. This is called a beefalo. This is a cow with a bison, right? So beef and a buffalo, beefalo, right? Hmm. Same type of thing. So that kind of shows you that they're of the same kind, all right? Or this one here. This is a pizzly bear, right? Dad is a polar bear, the mother is a grizzly bear, okay? They're not different kinds. We can look at it and say, on the, on the ark, I don't need to have polar bears and, and grizzly bears and panda bears. All I need is an original bear kind, and I can get all of these different animals from it because God put all the information in the original bear kind. You see that? So God is awesome, and when we see that, this, this displays God's power in doing that and putting all that information in this little dot of DNA inside of all these animals and inside of all of you. Because we've all come, right, from Adam and Eve, the original, the original parents, right? And from them, whoa, we get people that look very different from each other, right? They're all unique, but all made in God's image, right? All right? And all made. And Jesus Christ came and died for all mankind, right? So that's while well, we're unique. He came and died for us, right? So, thank you guys very much. You guys have any questions? Good? Very interesting. Yes. Now, you're not going to find things like, you're not going to find like taking a bird and a dog and mixing them and getting a bird dog. Okay? You're not going to get, you're not going to mix cats and dogs and get a dog, okay? You're, you're not going to get that. There are different kinds. But within the same kind, you've got you can mix you can mix wolves and dogs and get an animal because it's, they're the same kind. Okay. All right. God bless you guys. Have a great uh, have a great day. Your next speaker is Mr. Bill Barnes down here talking about the camel.